Guys, thanks for joining me. I um, just want to say my name is Adam Stewart, and I'm here in Hue Sai, Laos. And what I just did right there is I just doxed myself. I just let you know who I really was. Doxing is a term we use when people reveal their true identity. So you'll hear this term, are the people running that project doxed? Who are they? The reason for that is because it builds trust. We, we, we like to know who people are. But is it necessary? It's not. And let me give you some examples. If you're a collector and your sole purpose of entering the NFT space is to buy cool NFTs, buy beautiful artwork, you know, and, and just support people, you don't need to tell us who you are. That is not necessary. The only reason to do that is if you want to. So you 100% can ret retain your privacy if you so desire, okay? Um, but if you do choose to reveal yourself, a lot of artists really do appreciate that because we like to connect with the people that are supporting us. I mean, it, we'd like to build a rapport and a relationship with the people that are investing in our art and what we're creating for them. So, th But again, it's up to you. You don't feel pressured in any way to dox yourself if you're a collector or if you'd like to you just kind of look at the community. If you're just wanting to explore and look around, you don't need to dox yourself. Just create a fake profile and start joining spaces and, and interacting. Just look around if you like it. Then start logging in on your real pro or your project profile or your real profile. It's up to you. You don't you never have to dox yourself because it's the internet and there's internet safety concerns. Another reason that you may not want to is if you're under 18. There's some real sense of security and safety issues that you need to think about. Like I teach classes for some young Japanese students, for example, and I tell them you're allowed to do two things with parental permission, the country and your first name. Again, that's with parental permission. And when they interact online, I tell them they don't do it unless their parent is standing next to them or sitting next to them. I don't want them browsing the internet by themselves. This is just a matter of safety. Would you want your kid to go to a business meeting by themselves if they're just 10 years old? Absolutely not. So there's no reason for a child to ever dox themselves. It is up to the parent and the child together to do it. I would encourage parents to not let the kids dox themselves. And the reason I say that is because when they turn 18, they, don't, they, they might not want to have anything to do with NFTs anymore. And if they're not doxxed, they can just walk away. They don't have to be part of it. They don't have to feel that pressure. But if they're doxxed, it's going to follow them from here until the end because it's public. So think about that carefully. You don't need to dox yourself if you're underage. Now, when should we dox ourselves? Well, I'm going to give a, an example. I do a lot of, again, not necessary, but I, I, I would say it could help your project. I do a lot of like... Uh, charity slash humanitarian projects. Like for example, one of my first big projects was raising money for longevity research. So right off the bat, I said, hi, my name's Adam Stewart. I'm from Hoi Sai Laos. I'm a watercolor artist. And I'm trying to sell this NFT to raise money for longevity research. Um, and the reason I did that is I wanted to build trust in my project. And if there's a face where there's a name and a reputation on the line, it can do wonders to help people invest in you. Of course, you, everyone has to do their own research because people can pretend to be someone else. But the idea was, you know, by giving that information that I could help to build trust in me quicker than, than being a member of the community. Because I was, I was just coming into the community. And I just threw it out there, here's who I am. And I, I earned that trust, thankfully. And people helped that project succeed. And, and we were able to do uh, what we wanted and set out to do there. We raised the money for those researchers. And the same thing in the future, I, I did projects for um, the Aka children to help uh, get them school supplies and stuff like that. And again, I put my name on the line. I said, Hi, my name's Adam Stewart, I'm going to do this. And, and, I, and I did it step by step by step, you know. I took pictures when I took the money out of the ATM, and I, I took pictures of the kids receiving the supplies. You know, all this, like doxing, builds trust in a project. And it's important that we recognize that. So this is a case where doxing could be helpful. Another case would be if it's a big project where you're saying we're going to build a game, we're going to build a multiverse, you know, we're, we're, but you're trying to collect, you know, like a million dollars or you know, hundred thousands of dollars. When you do big projects like that, having a docs team can really um, inspire trust in your project. When a team is not fully docs, there's always that threat that someone might take that money and run off with it, you know. Of course, with the blockchain, we can follow where the money's going and it might eventually come back to you. And there's ways around it, you know, that people can do on the blockchain, but it, it's just not a good feel, you know? So those are cases where I think um, doxing yourself is beneficial. For a one-of-one -one artist, do you need to dox yourself? 100% no. You don't need to. You could just use a, a random name or a, a project account. And the reason I say no is because they're not investing in a long-term project, the utility of the project. All they're doing is investing in the art as it is. And in those cases, you don't need to dox yourself. If you want to, it's a choice, but there, there's not that need. 
It's only when you really start to try to get lots of money or when you're trying to do humanitarian projects where I feel doxing can actually help sell your project. So that's my thoughts on doxing. I want you to think about it carefully before you do it because you can only do it once. And once you do it, you, there's no take backs. I mean, everything's permanent on the blockchain. So once you mint something under your real name, your real name is attached to that NFT from now until forever. You know, even if you burn it, there's going to be a record somewhere in that blockchain that it happened. So with that said, be careful and, and do it when you really think about it. So for internet safety, all those factors that apply for normal internet safety, it applies here. So please be careful, please be safe, and but also don't be afraid. You know, enjoy the community. The community is so fun and full of wonderful people, and I have no regrets doxing myself. Um, I've built some very solid, intimate relationships and friendships that um, have turned into some of it turned into business partnerships and so on. So again, it's totally up to you. So I hope that uh, this helps, and I hope that you take this to heart and think about it, and uh, hope to see you in the next Twitter Spaces, guys. So uh, good morning and have a good night.